Welcome to Jesus is Lord. We encourage you to stand on God's word through all circumstances. Remember things only work together for our good when we fellowship with Jesus daily. Fear and faith cannot operate together. So praise God, uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about, some things that hinder and fight our faith. That's what I want to talk about today. I believe the faith message, we have to always go back and renew what we're, what our, what we're taught to the first beginnings. We have to go back to it. So praise God. Father, we thank you for this day. Yes, Lord. Thank you for those that came out today on Super Bowl Sunday. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask you to anoint the ears to hear what the yes. Spirit of God is saying, that we can hear what you're saying yes. to us today through your Word and through your Spirit. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for miracles. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For hastening your Word to perform it. God watches over His Word to yes. perform it. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in each of us today. We're going to leave here changed and with a new expectation. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus mighty name I give you myself Lord hide me behind the cross in Jesus name Amen. glory to God and I love that song brother Ken because it's not about me it's about Jesus Amen. I think this our strength today lies in knowing who you are in Christ That's Jesus right. because if you feel like it's you doing it you're going to fail. Amen. I'm going to fail. That's right. It's He's the one that's going to put you over. He is the one. Hallelujah. Let me get these things out here. And hallelujah. I'm excited about the Word. I love Amen. to share Amen. the Word. I love to share the Word. I got these old grandpa type classes. Mm -hmm. But I have to look over them to see you. And I have to look down here to see what those little bitty words are saying. Because yeah. the words get littler on paper. But they get bigger in my heart. Amen. Come on now. Because the Word is growing. It's alive in me. The Word of God is spirit and it's life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I want to talk about, let's talk about some things that faith are this morning. Well, first of all, Hebrews 11, 1 and says, I might need to run this way. So um, I'm going to move that. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith. See, so if it's not right now, it's hope. That's you're right. praying, you're hoping and praying. And you know, for many years before I realized what faith was, I was hoping and praying. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with hope. We have a hope. The church has a hope. We have a hope for our total redemption. Amen. Because man is only about, is two-thirds redeemed. See, we're going to have a new body. We haven't got that yet. That's right. See, so we're, our redemption... And see, we're going, to, there's going to be, we're going to heaven, but we're coming back here. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. A new. See, the Bible says, so part of me has already been new since when I got born again. So if you got born again and you know Jesus Christ is your Lord, there's a measure of faith in you. Yes. A measure of faith in you. Because it takes faith... To believe in the new birth. So you are a new creation. There's yes. the new creation in you. You're not what you used Glory. to be. Amen. You're different. And what are we changed into? The image and the likeness of what the Word of God is. What Jesus is. To know God, you have to know Him through His Word. Amen. Amen. God reveals Himself through his word. That's what he is. That's what he is. And oh, I have a hunger for yes. that word. I have some, just talking to people. Uh, somebody told me, you know, I said, do you know where Noah's Ark landed? I said, no, but I'm going to find out now. <laughs> I'm going to go dig it out. Eric. Mount Eric. And it's not a mountain. It's a series of mountains. And it's not in Iran. It's in Turkey. But it's close to the border. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know what that mount meant? That name Eret? What it meant? I don't know why I'm telling this. But praise God. I love to dig the word. But it says, The curse is broken. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's where the ark landed. 
Now, you know what? I can preach on that. I can preach on that one. What Jesus done, what? The curse has been broken. That's right. Amen. It's been broken over our life. We don't have to receive those curses because many of us have got yokes and bondage and things on our, yeah, yeah. On our life and our families and on our shoulders that we should not have, that Jesus has already taken them. Amen. Amen. He's already taken them upon Himself. <clears throat> so I have to receive the promises. Amen. There's thousands of promises in this Word. And therefore, each and every one of us. But you know what? You have got to take each one by faith. Amen. There's a certain amount of risk that you and I are going to have to take mm -hmm. when we step out in faith. A lot of things. Uh, God said, I felt the, lead, the, the leading of the Lord to start a church, to, to be a pastor. I said, but Lord, I've never been a pastor. Well, He's going to ask you to do something that you can't. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that you can't do. Amen. And I knew I couldn't do it. I said, Lord, that, that's a big task to be a pastor. Lord, that's a big task to stand up and preach the Word. Lord, I, I was a Sunday school teacher, but I thought that was all that He was doing. But I'm telling you, God is preparing something bigger, something bigger for you down the road. He's got something bigger for you. Hallelujah. And it, it's, we all preach the Word. We all call to share what Jesus has done for us. He didn't say just the preachers. He's called all of us. Hallelujah. So hope is wonderful. Hope is wonderful. But you know what? It's not faith. There's a big difference. I see, I see hope as kind of like a, 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 a body of water. That's a bridge. Here you are over here and you, you see a big island over there and you want to get over there. But that, that hope is like a bridge to get you there. That's right. Because that's, right. that's what's going to get you over there. You've got to go over that bridge. Okay. So hope is the bridge between you not getting and what you're believing for. Amen. Hope sustains you until faith matures <laughs> to where you can take yes. it to where you can say I know it's for me Amen. I know it's for me I know it's mine yes. hallelujah well, you know we got to know that and, and you know I, I praise God for little tidbits of revelation Amen. and that's what's going to happen is when that word is made alive to you and I that we can actually take a hold of it and say Lord you did that for me yes me yes and the whole world. But you know, you have to have a revelation that He wants you to be prosperous. You have to have a revelation that He wants you to be healed. That's right. Yes. See? And the prophetic word for this year is restoration. And then I had a prophet call me earlier this week and says, uh, Brother George, mm -hmm. are you ready? She's ah. fixing to take off. It says, because the word God gave me, I was praying for you. God told me to give you the word of acceleration. Wow. That's one of them suddenly. Amen. Amen. That's one of them yes. suddenly, Sister Jean, yes. that God is going to turn some things around. Woo! Yes. Turn yes. some things around. Change the situation that you're in. Yes. The healing is going to appear and it's going to manifest. God is going to change some things in your life. Because we do believe in a miracle work in God. Yes. He says it. He brags on himself. Uh. I love the scripture when my son had his wreck. He said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Absolutely not. Is there anything too hard for me, he says? And when you look at that, you know that he's our creator. He can fix anything he made. He needs to be fixed. Amen. This flesh really come from the dust of the earth. Amen. But He breathed life into it. He made this flesh alive. Yes. And God can speak life into any of your situations. Yes, hallelujah. You don't have to take death. The Satan wants to make you, he wants to attack everything that he can in your life 
because he knows that you and I are the apple of God's eye. Yes, glory. Hallelujah. We are his children. Yes. And the devil is constantly attacking us. And the Lord has given, he hasn't left us alone. No, he He's given us the authority of his word. Hallelujah. But let me get back on my message here. We all have a measure. God said he gave the mustard seed. He gave that to every man. Hallelujah. But that faith has got to grow. Jesus in his ministry, in his ministry, marveled at great faith. You remember the centurion, the, that story? He said, no greater faith have I seen in all Israel. No greater. But then he also marveled at their unbelief. Yeah. He said in, the, in where his town, he says, there I could do no mighty works. Yeah. He, had to, he had to leave. Because, do you know, they were not receiving who he was. That's exactly right, Brother George. They said, is not this just... Joseph, the carpenter's son. See, see, we look at one another with the eye of the flesh. Well, aren't you just so and so? Well, has God anointed you to do so and so? Watch out. Amen. Because He has. He's anointed every one of you. It don't make no difference what you look like. That's exactly right. Your looks has nothing to do with your faith. Amen. 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 But we look at it. We look at what one another look like. Well, he don't look like or she don't look like somebody that's got mountain-moving faith. But my Bible says that you've got mountain-moving faith. Amen. Amen. My Bible tells me I love the Scripture. And every chance I get, I, t I tell everybody that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Yes. How shall it not quicken and change your mortal bodies? Hallelujah. How shall it not? He's alive inside of me and yes. inside of you. Yes. And that's the strength that you're going to draw from when you see that you're changed. That He's living His life in you and through you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It feels good to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that anointing. Glory to God. Romans 10, 17. So faith cometh by hearing. So you know, so it takes my ears to get faith. That's right. <laughs> you ever thought about that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing. And hearing. You've got to keep on. So your mouth has got to be speaking some things. See? That's Romans 10, 17. Romans 1, 1 and 16 and 17. The just shall live by faith. So that's our walk, folks. God says you've got to live by faith. They that worship God must know that He is God and that He is the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. So I'm seeking Him today knowing that He has put faith in me, knowing that He is within me, knowing that He is never going to leave me. He is never going to leave me. Amen? Yeah. He's never going to leave you. It doesn't matter how bad the situation comes. And David, the, the devil sometimes will actually shake your world. Things just going on in your family. We'll talk about that too in a few minutes. But praise God. Um, there's a lot of things that fight our faith. Faith can be measured. It can grow. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the heart. Faith is in the heart, not the head. Out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaketh. So I can be around people in a few minutes and tell you, what's in their heart. The more time you spend with them, the more you see what's in here. Yes. Because, because some people, all they talk about is their hobbies. Mm -hmm. that's true. <clears throat> the things that's going on in their world. You know, and I don't mind people share, coming to me and I, being a pastor. Uh, I counsel a lot of people that uh, trust and confide in me. You know, but you have to hear some of this uh, talk that's not always positive. You have to hear some of this stuff so you know how to, to minister to people sometimes. Yes. You know, but don't keep on talking. The negative. Don't keep crying the blues all the time. Because, hey, my Bible tells me to take it to the Lord and leave it there. 
Amen. Take it to the Lord yes. and leave it there. You yes. know what? We're taking it to the altar, but I'm telling you, you know what? A lot of times by the time we get up, we're saying, oh, brother, I've had the worst week. You know, this and this and this and this has happened. And they write singing that same tune. We need to change our talk. Amen. And our talk will change our walk. That's right. It will change. Because Jesus had to speak to things, and we're going to have to speak to things. We're going to have to learn to speak to the situations and take it by faith. Amen. Because faith, we've got to use that muscle. We've got five physical senses, but faith is our sixth sense. Amen. Because it's part of our spirit man. We are a trinity. We are first of all a spirit. We live in this body. We have a soul, which is people confuse, you said it, soul from spirit and there's a difference. Your spirit man is made like God, just like Him. Amen. Just like Him. Your, your soulish area is your mind, will, and emotions. And God gave everybody my emotions. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say something. I've got a pastor friend, David Tripp and, uh, and Donna, and she is a wonderful woman. I love that woman. And uh, she and I talk, and she's, she's got a, a spirit to encourage everybody. And she's always got a revelation. George, can I tell you this? So she told me recently, she said, George, the Lord showed me that um, I own my emotions. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I own my emotions. And I said, well, let me think on that a minute. Yeah, God gave me emotions. But you know what? I can't let my emotions run wild with me. That's right. It, because you know what? That's going to that's gonna hinder, that's going to hinder my faith. Yeah. <clears throat> Doubt, fear, and unbelief are the, our enemies. Yes. And the more you think on those things, the more you're going to embrace that unbelief. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Lord said some things. Let's see. Oh, let's see, where was it? Yeah, Hebrews 3 and 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Yeah. And then departing from the faith. That's what Jesus said. Well, it's out of Hebrews. But this is what really He's saying about our faith and our unbelief. Our unbelief is evil. Amen. Yes. I told somebody after my son had a wreck, <clears throat> they said, brother, I don't know how you do it. I said, I don't either. I said, it's a God thing. That's right, I said, He gives me strength every day. Every day. Every day to help me through it. Yes. You know, I said, but God is, is with me. See, He's not left me. Amen. And He's got an expected end. We got to, folks, <clears throat> we got to realize that whatever you're going through, and I'm preaching to me, to that God has got an expected end of every situation. Yes, He has. He's already got it worked out. Already got it worked out. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So I have to believe that God is going to bring me through. And God is going to bring you through. Through it. He can take you out of it, but He will bring you through it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So I want to feed my faith and I want my faith to grow. So I've got to learn how to, to, uh, to do that. And it's, I've got to... So the Bible says that I'm supposed to think on whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are good. Mm -hmm. See? And I've got to cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the Word of God because, you know what? I, everybody has got an imagination. I mean, if you don't think so, say, uh, you know, I've been dreaming about a new house. Said, good gracious, I've been going through house plans. And I says, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. boy, 
you wouldn't believe the things that's going through my mind. You know, I love to watch Animal, um, Animal Kingdom uh, there, and it shows where they do the treehouse, this guy that builds these treehouses. It's some of the most amazing stories behind and the techniques that he does and they're all different they all look different and I said this is this is just amazing out of somebody's imagination that they can do that you know our imaginations can go wild but you know what David had a dream he was a dreamer and if you're a dreamer you can have your dream Amen. God says you can have your dream but you've got to keep that dream before you You've got to see your dream. God has called me and you to many things, but they're going to fall by the wayside unless we continue to keep our dream in front of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've all got things we want to do in life. What is your goal? I tell you, the older I get, the more my dreams change. Because the more I see that I need to really love people and to be more like Jesus is to be more concerned with the ministry, to be more concerned. It's not about what I gain and about material things. Life is not about material things. We're not taking anything with us, folks. That's exactly right. Not anything. You know, it's okay to have things, but things are not going to have me. Now, there's a difference there. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave this right here. Uh, doubt, fear, and unbelief is against our faith and going to fight us. And I want to bring up a story that's in the book of Genesis. And it's uh, in chapter 27. And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, a man named Isaac. And I'm going to tie it in with what I've been talking about. Isaac, was, he was growing old and he wanted to, he had two sons. He had uh, uh, Jacob and, and Esau. And he wanted to, uh, he was getting old and he, he was planning his, uh, his death. He knew that it was getting ready for him to pass. And so he had, he had uh, called and sent for Esau, which was his oldest son. And they wanted him to fix some venison. But, you know, I'm going to just stop right here and insert. How many has ever had anything stolen from you? Well, I'm telling you, the devil has stole. He's your adversary. That's right. And my adversary. And he stole from us all of our life. The devil has stole from me. The devil has stole from you. But God's promises says that I'll bring it back. And I'll bring it back sevenfold. Not two times fold, but I'll bring it back sevenfold. Sevenfold. But you've got to believe that. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, you know, we need to shout on the word. Because that's the Word of God. That's not the Word. That's not my Word. That's the Word that He says. Amen. And His Word is forever settled in heaven. And it's established. Amen. It's fixed. God will perform His Word. I don't care what you're seeking or what you're needing. Oh, glory. Needing from, from Him today. Hallelujah. So Isaac was getting old and he had sent for Esau and he told him that he wanted to fix him some stew, some venison stew. And then um, all of a sudden his wife Rebecca heard the story and she was, uh, she was tending to lean toward Jacob, which was the younger son. Mm -hmm. Younger son. Mm -hmm. and, and he was not a hairy person. Esau was kind of a hairy person fellow there and you know I'm just going to try to tell it because it's too much there to read so you know uh, she, they, she heard it and so she told him and they plotted against Isaac and you know what sometimes this is what the devil will use in families That's exactly right. they will show favoritism in children Amen. You can't do it. It brings a curse. Yes, it does. Brother. See, as a matter of fact, even, even uh, when uh, Rebecca told jo jo Jacob about this, he, she says, she says, he said, well, Mama, we'll, I'll be blessed. I will be cursed from this, not blessed. She said, well, let the, let the curse come upon me. Isn't that something? See, sometimes you don't realize what we're doing. See, we're not, we don't realize what we're doing in life. But anyway, she went on and, uh, and, and, and uh, they carried through their plan. And so um, when Esau came back, 
to Jacob, I mean to uh, Isaac, he realized, they both realized, father and son realized that they had been deceived. You know, the name Jacob means deceiver. His name means deceiver. Wow. See, not only did he deceive the birthright that he had because he was the firstborn and supposed to take the blessings of the father that was spoken over him and passed on, but he stole his blessings too. He hit him double. He took from him. See? Hallelujah. Oh, this is going to get good. It's going to get good. Hallelujah. So, you know, they had planned. They went through it. We saw that Jacob, and the, the, he stole the two blessings. And when Esau and Isaac knew that the Lord had deceived him, Esau came and he cried before his father. And he said, he said, bless me, father. Bless me. Do you have a blessing for me? Well, you know what? The blessing is not reversible. When he left and he said that you will serve your brother and all these blessings will come upon him for the rest of his life and he would live by the sword, he could not reverse that. Amen. He couldn't reverse it. So, But here's what his father said. It says... Um, he spoke in verse 39, and let's see if we can find that. We'll go to 39, and we'll take it right there, 39 and 40. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be thy fatness of the earth, and the dew of the heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. See there? It says, And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have dominion, Thou shalt break his yoke from off his neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father had blessed him. And see, he had even plotted to kill him. Do you see what things money will do and inheritance will do in families? Yeah. It will tear families apart. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Join us each week at the same time for Jesus is Lord. And when near Greenville, stop by the Bread of Life Tabernacle two miles past Welcome Middle School on Highway 11 and join us as we worship the King and enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Until next week at the same time, this is Brother Ken Jones asking you, is Jesus your Lord. The river and the river is moving in me. Uh -huh. Adam